Now let's move on to today's edition of Perspective, and it's a fictional book full of fictional characters, and yet it tells a story in a very personal way of the struggle for and against abortion rights in the US. It is, of course, one of the issues really dividing the country, with a landmark overturning of the Roe versus Wade judgment by the US Supreme Court, making it far harder for many Americans to have an abortion. But what is the real effect of that on people? Well, Isabel Han lived in the US from 2017 until 2021. She was a correspondent there for the French newspaper Liberation. But whilst there, she wrote her book. It's called Le Choix, as you can see there, or The Choice, it would be called in English. Thanks very much for joining us on the programme. Um, tell us, first of all, what your aim was in writing the book. I think I was, I was trying to understand the, uh, to understand the issue myself, uh, to be honest. Um, I met so many people along the way during my uh, trips to the South, to the Midwest, and there was still this this mystery of how one can dedicate their lives to uh, protesting against the, you know, the freedom of a woman to decide what she wanted for her own body. So was it your work then as, as that correspondent for Liberation that led you to, to kind of become fascinated by the issue? Absolutely. I think, I think it's not something, you know, as a French girl, <laughs> that's not something that I thought would ever be questioned. And the minute I moved to the States, uh, I understood how it was like a hot topic and how it was gonna, you know, I covered so many of these restrictive bills that were being discussed, especially in the South and in the Midwest. And one day I met this young Texan girl who was raised in, the, in a very co conservative family. And uh, she was uh, raised with this ideology of being anti-abortion and she would uh, protest in front of abortion clinics and, um, uh, until one day she got pregnant and at a very young age and the first thing her mom told her was go get an abortion and um, which she did and it totally shattered her belief system and uh, I think to me she was a portal because now she is estranged from her family and she became a, a pro-choice activist and she was a portal into understanding the psychology of both sides of the issue and because she did the journey herself. Uh, and she really made me understand how, before being a political opinion, abortion is an intimate experience. Mm. What seems interesting to me as well is, as a journalist, you might expect you to, to, to write some kind of journalistic publication or whatever on this, but you didn't, did you? You decided to, to write something that was fictional. Yeah, I mean, as you were saying earlier, uh, abortion is the quintessential divisive issue, especially in the US, but in other parts of the world as well. And, um, you know, when you talk to people, you're kind of like always hitting this wall of, of slogans. And with fiction, you can get beyond these antagonistic positions. It allows you to get into uh, people's minds. You're kind of a little, you know, a little god see overseeing what they could think or do. And um, I think to me it was like, trying to go beyond what, what I was reading and un understanding. And with fiction, you can uh, get within people's interiority, people's mindset, and, and try to understand better their motivation and their contradictions too. And what you did was you, you kind of created certain characters, didn't you? I mean, there's Leia, the daughter of a, a prolific, a pro-life pro senator, Norma, young black woman already raising a child on her own. She finds out she's pregnant again. And through them, you kind of get a, an understanding, I suppose, of what it's like. Yeah. And they're all based on people I met along the way. Uh, people I interviewed, like women seeking abortions or doctors and nurses who were receiving death threats or activists on both sides of the issue that were uh, dedicating their life to the cause. And, um, but my characters are hybrids of all these people uh, because fiction allows you also to concentrate, to concentrate ideas and, and yeah, that's, that's how I, I worked. Mm. And when you were creating the characters, as you say, they're based on people. Are, are they sp they're, they're specific individual people or are they kind of a, a mix, if you like, of, of different people you met? A little bit of both, a little bit of both. Some are, uh, Mark, for instance, is the, the mix of two men, one that I met in Alabama and another one I met in Texas who were um, kind of the local leaders of uh, the pro-life movement uh, in their states. Um, and some are more 
first an idea, like Norma is more an idea for me at first, and but also she was informed by um, amazing women that I talked to for years. Um, Leah, she's also a mix um, of the young Texan girl I was talking about earlier, uh, because she is raised in this very conservative family with this Republican father and, you know, surrounded with lobbyists. Um, uh, but she's also a free thinker. And I was very moved by also young girls I met along the way because they don't think, you know, the way you would expect. What was it like writing from that perspective? Again, not factual, but putting the emotion in through the characters. Oh, personally, I, I found that super liberating, uh, very freeing. I mean, fiction is such an amazing vehicle to say so many things. I'm not sure, you know, I've been writing articles for the past 15 years or so. Uh, I've never had that impact. I've never been invited uh, to talk to to talk about my articles. I think fiction allows you to be much closer to emotions. And 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 I think it's uh, it's a very powerful tool. Shouldn't forget, of course, there's as with any debate, there's always another side to the debate. Do we see that within the book? I mean, there are people, aren't there, who are very passionately um, against abortion? Absolutely. And I think I think that was also my 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 perspective in choosing fiction was that I don't want to judge and I want to understand what's happening. Like people can be sort of a, like a black box when you when you when you meet them on on the ground and I want it to feel like what is what it means to, you know, as I said, it's such a divisive issue. For some, it's a fundamental right. For others, for others, it's um, it's an infanticide. It's a crime. So when you build your entire mindset, your life, your views of the world around this idea of abortion is a crime because there's life as soon as there's conception. What does it mean? Like you, it means you're leaving thinking there are thousands and thousands of, of babies, because that's the way they see it, are, that are being killed every day. Uh, and I wanted to push this further uh, to understand how it would impact their entire behavior. And of course, it's been impacted even more last year with the overturning of, of the Roe versus Wade judgment. Yeah. I mean, I started working on this book in, you know, 2018, 2019. Um, with the first wave of very, uh, I mean, first wave during my tenure as the correspondent, because uh, it's been a while um, since it started, but um, uh, the first wave of very restrictive uh, anti, like abortion laws in, in the South. Um, but uh, so you could feel on the ground that, you know, Roe v. Wade was uh, doomed. So people were not like in a lot of places, people were not surprised. But now you have 12 states where it's totally uh, illegal to get an abortion, e abortion, even in cases of uh, rape or incest. Uh, so now the reality is much different. But the period where the novel is set, it's the fall of 2021, uh, right after Texas implemented a very restrictive law, but it was still um, you know, nine months before the overturning of Roe v. Wade. But you could feel it was an era, a moment where you could feel those were the last months of, of Roe v. Wade. Yeah, incredibly contemporary, uh, contemporarily written as well. Thanks very much for joining us on the programme. Great to have you uh, with us, Isabel Han, uh, author of Le Choix. Unfortunately, only in French at the moment, but uh, Isabel was telling me she's hoping maybe one day to translate it into English. We can but hope. Thanks very much, uh, Isabel Han, joining us.